Hey guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this coin right here. This is a game ready asset that you could import right into Unreal. And I'm going to be showing you not only how to do one, but four different coins with variations in texture. So we have a lot of options. Now we're going to be covering uh, retopology, UVs and texturing. So that's it. Let's go. Let's start working on this coin right here. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, we have a very like weird line going around this element, and I definitely want to clean it up. So uh, there's a bunch of ways in which we can do this. I'm just going to use Trim Dynamic, to be honest. And with Trim Dynamic, I'm literally going to push that line towards the character so that we're kind of like bridging the gap pretty much like that. Same thing over here, just very, very softly. I mean, it's supposed to be an old coin, so even if things are slightly off, that's fine. Or Dynamesh, and again, keep pushing those elements because they could cause a little bit of an issue. Another good option to get rid of those elements is with Inflate. You can like very lightly inflate the polygons on those areas, and that's also going to um, like collapse all of the polygons into one point, and it's going to be a little bit easier to, to work with. Then with Clay Buildup, we can like bring back a little bit of the of the details of the character if we need to. There we go. So just a, a basic thing. I mean, this coin is probably gonna be seen at this distance. There are some gains, you probably see them when you go into the inventory and you can analyze the object, which is very cool. But what usually happens in those games is you have different levels of detail, LODs they are called. So when you see them very close up, the resolution and the textures are gonna be higher. And when they're far away, you're gonna see them really, really small and really simple. So the first thing I need to do is I need to clone this so that we can work on a, on a different element. And I'm going to go to C plugin, Decimation Master. I'm going to decimate it to 250K is usually a good number for, for props like this. It holds a lot of the detail and it allows us to work very nicely. And um, the question that everyone's going to be asking is, do we need to do manual retopology for this thing? And the answer is, if you want the best possible result, then yes. But don't worry. Stay tuned right now because I'm going to show you a very cool process that we can do inside of Maya to um, to work very nicely. So let's go here. I'm going to go uh, export and I'm going to export this to the desktop for now. I'm going to call this coin underscore high. This is going to be an FBX export. And there we go. And let's open Maya real quick. Very well. So we are here inside of Maya and I'm just going to go file import and going to the desktop. We can import our coin high. The first thing, one of the most important things is we should try to have this in a real world scale because a lot of the things in this in the 3D world work nicely in real world scale. So I'm imagining that it's going to be like an inch, so like 3.5 centimeters or something like that. So it, it's pretty much already there. So I'm just going to grab this element right here and I'm going to change the radius to 3.5 centimeters. Actually, that's the height. So this one, let's change it to 3.5. I think that's a good size. And if we need to scale it down, it's usually a little bit easier to scale things down than it is to scale them up. Let's rotate this uh, 90 degrees and I'm gonna scale this to the top view. There we go, something like that, perfect. Now here I need to decide whether I want to texture the coin like up and down or like completely flat. I actually think completely flat like this is gonna be a little bit better because I'm gonna show you some generators later on that are gonna be useful in this position. So let's freeze the transformation is very important because this is going to be our new size and we're going to go to front view and we need to start creating the low poly mesh. So here's the trick. I'm going to go to mesh tools and I'm going to use a create polygon tool and I'm going to create a big polygon that goes around the whole like silhouette of the coin. Remember that um, a resolution or, or when we're doing a retopology, one of the most important things is to capture the silhouette of the object as close as we can, as close as possible. Let's go one right there and one more right there. And as you can see, all of these points, they very closely close the, uh, the coin. I can still see a couple of points that could be like further improved. And the, and the closer we are to the silhouette, the better. It's going to give us the cleanest effect uh, over the whole thing. Uh, for instance, here, I can definitely feel or, or see that we are missing one. So I'm going to go with my uh, cut tool. I'm just going to add one point right there. Oh, grab that one. Just push it up a little bit again, so that we get a better uh, distribution. So if we take a look at that polygon, you're going to see that this is a very ugly angle. And if you've been like learning 3D, you probably have heard that uh, you need to make sure that you don't have any angles on your character. And that's like completely, completely real. However, we can actually use angles to our advantage. So for instance, right here, if I just say mesh display and reverse, and I go to the top view, and I extrude this control E forward, right to about there, which is where the coin uh, border ends, 
what's going to happen, as you can see right now, is all of those points are now like a very clean, nice silhouette. It's like a cylinder. It's like if we had created a cylinder and moved the points around, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. I'm going to grab the back part right here. I'm going to say Control E, and I'm also going to push this back right here. There we go. So that's pretty much it. The next thing that we need to do is we need to think about this like chain effect, for instance, here on the back. And we need to ask ourselves the question, are we like really like how many coins are we going to have on the game, right? If, if there's like a treasure hoard and you're going to have like millions of coins or whatever, then probably something like this is more than enough. Um, I might even like remove this edge right here so that we only have, as you can see, 64 triangles on our element. Because this two faces, if we just go mesh and triangulate, that's a perfectly fine effect. Actually, in this case, I would suggest going uh, edit mesh and poke. It's going to give you a, a nicer, cleaner effect. And as you can see, 68 uh, triangles. That's all we have for one single coin. And when you see it from afar in the game, again, that's perfectly, perfectly balanced. But I want to go a little bit higher because um, I want to have a little bit more like resolution to our whole thing. So if we take a look at the coin here, you're going to see that it has like several high points, especially like the face on this side. And on this side, it's pretty much just this area. So we're going to grab this face. I'm going to press Control E and I'm going to offset this so that we go close to the chain right around there. And then I'm going to control E, push it up and offset a little bit. So it's kind of like a little ramp that we're using to capture the high point of where the chain is. And that's going to give us a little bit of a, a better shading. It's not going to be perfect, but at least the coin's not going to look perfectly or completely flat. So we're going to have a little bit of, uh, of effect. I know some people will be like, oh, this is a waste of polygons. And yeah, maybe it's not the best like a use of them. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a good way to, to capture this sort of silhouette. Same thing for the axe. We could do another control E right here another offset, or in this case, I'm just going to use R to scale. I'm just going to scale this face in like this. And then we can scale this up, just push it up a little bit. And that way, as you can see, we create a little bit of, of a rise effect on this thing. So that's going to give us, you know, not in every single part of the coin, but especially when you see the coin at as itself, like right here, let's go mesh uh, display soft edge there's going to be a little bit of something, right? Like that little effect right there, it's going to, it, it could help. Maybe this last one might not help as much, to be honest. So I'm just going to leave it at this point. I think the chain is, is good, but the, the axe is not really necessary. So now uh, what I want to do here is I want to make sure that we have the, the back part of the coin ready. So this face right here, I'm just going to say edit mesh and poke. For those of you that are like super optimizers and you want to have like the best possible resolution, yes, we can go to some of these triangles, like skip one and select the next one like this and uh, and just collapse them. We can collapse them and that's going to like reduce the amount. It's a flat area. It's not going to affect anything. We're still capturing the high point on that area. And again, shouldn't be that much of a problem. Again, we can say mesh display and soften edge and that's it. We got a, a nice, a simple coin. Now on this one, this one's a little bit trickier, and this is where I would actually suggest using Quadra. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab the coin. I am gonna give myself a little bit of a border, so Control E, and just offset a little bit. Not too much, right around there. Push this up a little bit so that we're close to like the, the chain and things. Like right around there, there we go. And then I'm gonna delete this face grab the coin, make this a live surface, grab my low poly and go into quadro mode. And what I want to do here is I want to start like creating a profile for the main face of uh, Thyros right here, which is my character. I'm actually, uh, if you guys are not aware, we did a, a Baldur's Gate playthrough or uh, intro video. So you, if you want to check it out, it's on the channel as well. And that uh, the character that we created is named uh, Thyros after one of my favorite characters that I've done in the last couple of years. So there we go. As you can see, I'm going to try to capture this round shape because you can see there's a, a little bit of a high point right there. And if we just keep that, or if we just add that high point, we might get a little bit of a better effect. I don't need to capture every single detail everywhere else, like just keep it really simple. But I do recommend like capturing this little edge right here. I know it sounds like, a, or it might appear like a little bit of a waste of, of polygons because it's, it's a very thin like element, but again, if we if we do it, if we do capture this this thing right here, here's a trick for retopology. I'm gonna use a tap. If you use tab, you can just extrude one line, and that's a little bit easier for Maya to to follow. So by doing this, I am gonna be able to catch a little bit of a shadow on the on the high poly or on the low poly rather, and that's gonna give me a little bit more depth in general. So 
even though yes this is not as optimized as it can be like the most optimized thing is that little first like circle that i show you this is still a perfectly valid way and um and this is a discussion that i have frequently especially in, in, in online forums like when i post works or or people are commenting about like portfolio pieces so i was like oh the topology is not perfect and as um alex alvarez the founder of noman used to say topology is a guide it's like a like a set of instructions but it doesn't need to be or it doesn't have to be this like a cult where if you don't do proper topology the, the topology police is gonna come to your door and they're gonna be like oh you're now banned from being an artist because you did not follow proper topology that's never gonna happen like it, it, it's it's just not not what's going to happen. For instance, here, a small little trick to, to keep topology a little bit cleaner. Let's just add a triangle right there. And by doing that, and going back to Quadro, I'm going to be able to fill those elements right there. From here, just big, big freaking squares right there. One, and then let's do another one right there, another one right there, triangle right there. That's fine. It's a flat area. No need to worry about it. So I, I do feel like students, especially like newer students and we as a teachers we, we we tend to like inflict or or create that fear in people of uh telling them hey you need to have like perfect topology if not like no one's gonna hire you it's not perfect topology it's just good topology okay so there's always ways to to make things even more perfect but as long as it works then you're gonna be fine so that's it as you can see we now have uh, this thing right here which is our coin i'm just gonna say mesh a display and soft an edge now, for this one in particular, we need to do UVs. That's why I personally prefer to have one extra line at the center of this line right here. Some might be like, hey, that's, I don't know, like 20 extra polygons or something. Yes, it is, but it also allows us to do a very clean cut down the middle that's not going to be as visible. We could also do it here on the on the side, but again, I personally think that that's a good point to, to do so. So I'm going to select this edge right here, because otherwise, when you do the cut on the, on the lines on the very border, when you do the bakes, sometimes you get like very weird bakes, and um, I personally think it looks a little bit worse so i'm gonna go uv and well first of all we're gonna do uv delete uvs and we're gonna say uv and we're gonna do a camera based projection and once we do that we just go uv 3d cut and we cut down the middle like this is probably the most or the simplest uv you can do we just control u to unfold control l and there we go we get this one now since we have enough space, I can see we have enough space right here, and there's no way we can cut this to get more space, or if we cut it, it's just gonna be a waste of, uh, of, of cuts. One thing that we could do though, is we could duplicate this coin twice, and we could have two, three, four different coins that are gonna give us a slightly different results, like slightly different textures, and that way when you see all of the coins in the same place, they're not, all good. They're not gonna be all the same. They're gonna be the same in the geometry, but with the textures, we can hide certain things, we can make some of them a little bit more rusted, a little bit less rusted, and stuff like that, and that's a perfect perfectly valid way to do so. So the only thing with that is if we're going to be doing bakes, we need to do the bakes for all of the coins. Um, and that means that we're going to have to duplicate this thing a couple more times. Or yeah, no, we need to do that because otherwise the, the normal map's not going to work. So I'm going to remove this thing right here, grab both elements. I'm going to control D, duplicate both of them. Just move them to the side. Make sure you move them enough apart so that the ambient occlusion from one of the coins is not going to affect the other one. And then do the same thing right here. Now, I know this is 1 million triangles now with high polys, but usually, again, nowadays, triangles are not that much of an issue. So this is going to give us a nice effect. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to grab all of the high polys and I'm going to combine them into a single object. Build a history for extra dimension, all that, all the stuff. There we go. And I'm going to grab all of the low polys and combine them into a single object as well. And again, delete everything. Later on, we can separate the low polys and have them as individual coins. That's fine. I'm gonna UV, UV editor, and now we just go control L to lay them out. And as you can see, now we have four coins. So we're gonna have more textures. And again, we can do a little bit more variation on each of these elements. I'm gonna grab the low poly coin. I'm gonna call this coin underscore low. And I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna call this coin underscore high. And that's it. Now, before we continue with the substance part, just a little commercial here. If you are interested in doing this workflow or a very similar workflow, but for a huge, huge, like very cool axe right here, a game prop with uh, all of the specifications that we go through, modeling, sculpting, UVs and stuff, this course is available right now. You can check it in the description. It's in Udemy. It's usually in like a good discount. So uh, we don't have discounts, but Udemy usually has them. So make sure to check it out if you're interested in learning the full process for a more complex prop. Let's continue. So now that we have these coins, we need to export them. Of course, I'm going to grab the lows. I'm going to say, oh, did I, oh, I rename them wrongly? So this one's going to be called low. And this one's going to be called high. There we go. 
So we're going to export the coin lows file, export selection. Let's go to the desktop for now. FPX is usually good. I prefer XBX to OBJ because um, it works a little bit better with most softwares. OBJ loses a lot of information. I'm just going to call this coins or coins like that. And then the high, we're going to call them coin high, which is the one that we have right here. And we hit yes. And now let's open Substance Painter. There we go. So we're opening Substance Painter and we're covering three softwares in one little video. So if you're not subscribing, you think this is valuable, please, please help us with the subscription. It helps the channel grow and it allows me to keep this, uh, keep doing this for you, my friends. So we're going to go here, select, we're going to select our coins with S, because multiple, and usually a 2K map for this assets is more than enough. We're going to keep it direct X because I do want to show you how this coins could look inside of Unreal, which is a, a good stuff or a good thing that we can do. So I'm going to do direct X right there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just hit OK. What we should see right here are our low poly versions of the coins. Now I'm going to go to this little croissant option right here, which is the baker. We're going to set this to 248 and on the high definition meshes, we're just going to load in our coins. What this do, I've explained the, the baking process a lot of times, but I'm going to do it again. What this do is it projects lines outside and inside of the object and it looks for information on the high poly, which we're loading right here. And as you can see right now, we're not getting any error. So the cage that we're generating should be more than enough to catch pretty much all of the details. And again, it's important that they're like separated enough because otherwise the ambient occlusion could contaminate them and you could get like weird shadows on the sides but in this case I don't think that's going to happen we really don't need to do the matching but I am going to use this anti-aliasing by four so that we get a softer effect on the normal map and we just bake this is a GPU powered so as you can see it's very very fast and we can get a, a very nice result uh, with not a lot of effort and we get all of the maps that we need to work inside of uh, inside of substance we get the uh, normal map of course we get the cavity map we get the ambient occlusion map so that's it. This is the coin that we would be seeing in the game. And it's very, very low on polygons. And look at how much detail we have. So this is what we're looking for. Now, let's very quickly look for some old coins and see how they look, right? Like what kind of coin do we want? I think I'm going to go for like the traditional uh, like gold sort of like bronze uh, coin that we have. So this sort of like effect right here. So it's like this gold tarnished effect. Um, interesting. Oh, this one's perfect. This is like, this is exactly the type of texture that I want. Um, one interesting thing, pure metals or what we call like the uh, fancy metals, like silver, uh, gold, bronze, they don't uh, rust in a traditional way. And I don't know the chemicals or the reasons why that is. Some of you might want to leave me uh, the information down here on the, on the description, but I do know that the colors that they get is not really rust. It's like a tarnish sort of effect. So for instance, silver, Silver creates this very interesting tarnish where you get this sort of like dark color, but again, it's not rust, it's tarnish. So it's a lot easier to clean uh, than rust. So yeah, so this one right here, this is perfect. I'm just gonna copy this image and I'm gonna open Pure Ref. Pure Ref, for those of you that don't know, it's an amazing software to get your um, like reference. So we're gonna use this one as a reference. And reference is king whenever we're doing uh, texturing and pretty much anything in the 3D world. So if you're not using reference, you I, I can say like with confidence there that you might not be a great artist because every great artist should be using reference. Uh, we got this one right here with the stylized a raw metal or something. I'm gonna drop it into my coins. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna match the roughness and the color of this coin right here. Unfortunately, I don't think this thing, oh, we can, perfect. So we could just sample this thing and I'm just gonna go for like the most like basic color right there, which is that one. That seems to be like the base color. And in the roughness, I definitely need to increase the roughness quite a bit. So it's quite, quite rough. We're gonna have some like uh, like shiny areas, but the base metal should be quite, quite tarnished, quite, uh, quite dark. Now, I know I just said that metal or this metal does not rust, but I'm gonna use the metal rust right here to generate the same color because we can go to the rust itself, pick the color and grab this sort of like greenish hueish effect. Look at that, oh, beautiful. And we can use this to generate the rust on our coins. So I'm gonna say add a black mask and we're gonna add on this black mask, of course, a generator that's gonna be a dirt generator. And that way, as you can see, we're gonna get the very, very nice rust in all of our coins. So what I see on the rust is that's not, it's a little bit more contrasty. So I'm gonna push the contrast, contrast, contrast a little bit up. I'm gonna increase the intensity a little bit more as well. And I think the color is a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna go back here to the color and just bring the color a little bit cleaner to like a bluish hue. There we go. And I'm actually gonna blur it a little bit more. So I'm gonna, the dirt contrast, I'm gonna bring it down so that it's a little bit more blurred. I don't like the fact that this is adding a little bit of height information. So I'm gonna remove the height information. Actually, I kinda like it. 
kind of like it, but it's a little bit too much. So there's two ways you can change the height. You can go to technical parameters and bring the height position down. Okay, so I'm going to keep it like 0.4 or something like that. Or you can go to the height information over here and just reduce the intensity. Both of those methods work uh, similarly. Now, the problem with this, and you can notice that when we look at all of the coins, is that the rust on all of the coins is exactly the same, which is exactly what we wanted to avoid when we were doing um, this exercise, right? Like we, we decided to have four coins so that we can have variation between them. So I'm going to add here a very traditional layer that I add, which is a fill layer. Oh, I'm going to add a fill layer. And I'm going to add, there are, I believe, some rust elements. I actually have some mask right here, like this rust leaking, uh, this grunge mask. Uh, let's use this grunge rust to find. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the balance, increase the contrast, and increase the tiling. So we get this like spotty effect. Let's increase the contrast even more. So what I want to do with this mask is I'm going to multiply this against the coins. And as you can see now, every single coin has a slightly different sort of like rust effect throughout the whole thing. And we can play again with the balance here and you can see how they all change uh, slightly different. So this grunge mask is really, really important because it's really gonna break down the way my coins look. So they should look similar because they're supposed to be the same value, right? But the texture is gonna allow us to generate a very nice variation. Now I see this dark spots right there, very nice dark spots. And I'm gonna use another rust layer here for those dark spots. But what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna be using the color. Oh, here's a trick someone suggested on the comments. So if I wanna turn everything off except for the color, I press Alt and click, and that's gonna turn everything off except for the color. Great tip, by the way, thank you. I don't have your name right now, my friend, but if you're watching this video, thank you very much because I've been using Substance for eight years and I didn't know that. So black mask, right click, and I'm gonna use a fill layer here. And I want to use, again, we can even use my uh, rust generator. There we go. That one looks pretty sick. And what we can do with this one, uh, first of all, I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to add a filter where it levels. I'm going to invert the element. There we go. And I'm going to play a little bit with the, with the values of this thing. And then I'm just going to change this to something like an overlay and reduce the intensity quite a bit. So what that's going to do, as you can see, is this is going to dirty up my uh, coins in such a way that they get some interesting variations on their tones without giving me a like super obvious effect. Kind of looks like blood, so I actually like the the sort of effect that we're getting right there. So yeah, that's uh, that, that that will be my let's call it the the dirt pass of my of my coins. Now we're going to go for the like polish pass of the elements. And what I want to do is I want to add a metal edge where of course it's going to like bring the shine out of our coins and maybe some scratches or something like that. So for the metal edge where I'm going to go back here, I'm going to bring again my stylized uh, gold right here. I actually think that's a very nice color. Um, it's not super saturated, but it gives us a nice like clean brightness. I'm gonna add a black mask and we're gonna add a generator. And this is gonna be, of course, the metal edgeware generator. And as you can see, that's gonna bring out the high points of the coins, the, the points that you would normally rub against your fingers, against your pants, in your wallet, or on your coin pouch. Like that's the sort of stuff that you might find when you're uh, dealing with this, guys. Now I am gonna bring the wear level up and the wear contrast down because I wanna really, really soften this up. Another way in which we can soften this is we can right click and add a filter. And by adding a blur filter right here, as you can see, that's going to give us a slightly well, blurred effect for the whole thing. I usually like to change this to linear dodge so that it like punches the colors of my coins. And uh, here, I'm definitely going to bring the intensity down. So this is like normal effect, like this is the, the normal coin that we have. And if we start adding a little bit of that effect, we can bring this hardness of the, or this sort of like clean gold effect up. And as you can see, that's going to give us a very, very nice effect. Now, I still think it's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go to the color and I'm gonna bring the color down a little bit. Just so that it's not like overwhelming and, and like burning the exposure of our, of our element. But uh, yeah, that looks good. One thing we can do here is we can also add another um, like fill layer. Let's add it like a clouds layer. Clouds. Let's play with the contrast here and with the tiling. And we can also set this to multiply. So now these clouds are hiding certain parts of the coins, again, in a random way. So each coin gets a slightly different effect. And we can play around with how much like uh, 
metal edge where we're seeing and again it's not going to be a uniform metal edge where which is going to give us a very very nice effect i do feel like the roughness is a little bit up for this one still so i'm going to bring the metal roughness a little bit up not too much because i, I do want to have this sort of like shiny shiny effect but we definitely need to to bring it up a little bit to to match what we have right here now i can see that this one's very 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 damaged with the, with the rust effect so we might want to bring this thing underneath the rust effect and that's going to, as you can see, bring the tone down a little bit as well, because the rust are like overriding that sort of effect. So it, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Like if you guys want to have like a very shiny coin or a very like old coin, this is uh, this is where you could do something like this. Now, I'm going to add um, a scratch layer, as I've mentioned. So I'm going to add another like stylized thing right here. And I'm going to add a black mask. This is going to be a generator. It's going to be or sorry, not a generator. This is going to be a fill layer and we're going to be using a scratch mask this one right here and of course we're going to increase a little bit of the balance or in the tiling especially let's go here on the balance there we go let's bring the contrast up there we go so now as you can see we're adding this scratches pretty much individually, like each individual coin is going to have a slightly different scratch. One of the things that we could do is we could go here to the technical parameters and push the height position down. And as you can see, that's going to carve in into the coins. So we're going to get some interesting lines, like hitting the, or, or giving us some depth that we did not sculpt. And all of this is uh, procedurally generated. And again, it's going to make the coins look very interesting because we have variation. And if, if you have a player and he grabs like all of the coins and he wants to analyze them, we're going to have enough variation on all of them to get a very cool effect. That's pretty much it, I think. Um, finally, I, I would say like maybe another pass of rust might be a good idea. So let me show you another technique that we can use. I'm going to use a metal rust again. And instead of using a generator, I'm going to use a fill layer and I'm going to use the ambient occlusion of the of the coins. So the ambient occlusion map, as you can see right here, is inverted. So to invert this, I need to add a levels and invert this. And now we can play and generate a very, very interesting effect only on the cavities of the of the element. So I'm going to go with a really, really high like rust amount like this. Of course, the color of the rust is going to be like this sort of like green color. There we go. I'm going to change this to an overlay. Now overlay, <laughs> overlay destroys it. Multiply is fine. And then I'm going to go really low on the multiply effect right there. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is on the options of the rust. Again, I just want to affect the color. So I don't want to affect the roughness. This is just going to be adding like a like an extra layer of color. And as you can see, the coins are going to look really nice, really, really old. And um, it, it just changes like the tone on certain areas of the coin while still keeping everything else intact. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I am going to file, save this before we lose anything. Let's call this coins. And I'm going to go file and we're going to export the textures. Again, I'm just going to export them on the desktop for now. Later on, I'll, I'll clean the desktop and I'll, I'll place everything where they're supposed to be. And these are going to be um, Unreal Engine 4 packed coins. So I'm just going to hit export. And that's it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. With this, we are pretty much done with the creation of this uh, asset. So it's the, the whole like texturing and baking process. Let me know down here in the comments if you want me to show you how we can get this into Unreal. However, we have the low polys and we have the maps ready. So this could perfectly, perfectly fine going to Unreal without any issues. So yeah, that's pretty much for this one, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you are not subscribed, we're missing like almost half of the people that see the videos are not subscribed and it could really help the channel grow. And if you want to see the full process, as I've shown you before, we got a this course right here with the X where we go over the whole process, modeling, sculpting, low poly retopology, baking, everything. So if you want to delve deep into the production pipeline of, of 3D assets, well, you know where to go. Make sure to join us in Discord, Twitter, everywhere. And I'll be happy to see you next time. Bye-bye.